Howdy folks, Kirk and Jay here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today, what we're going to show you guys is how to plaster a ceiling. Now this ceiling has everything. Uh, it has the old cedar wood lath. And because they had a bathtub leak, a uh, toilet leak, uh, they pulled out some of the old wood lath. It's a nightmare to try to find this stuff. So you can use 3.4 mesh wire. That's what we've done here and over here where there's a hole. Let me tell you some of the details about this stuff, guys. Now, they pulled the, they corrected the pipe. My buddy Bert did that from Roto Plus or, uh, Plumbing. I, I remember him from six years ago. We worked for him. Anyway, getting back to what this is. This is struck to light with white coating. I mean, today they call it veneer finish, but it, back in my days, it was just white coating. It's a lime plaster. It's really good. Let me show you some tips too, guys. As far as the wood, in the old days too, they would take the cedar wood lath and they'd wet it. They'd wet it all day. And that way when the plasters came the next day, like us, it would have a mechanical bond. It would bond not by suction to this, but it would also mushroom and adhere through the top. That's the, that's the good bond. It's like button board. It goes through the holes and it, and it bonds. The same thing happens with this mesh. Put your mesh on tight because you don't want it flexing. And the plaster goes the same way here. It just mushrooms through the top and that's what adheres it. I'll tell you another thing you should have, guys, while I'm on it, is a couple HEPA vacuums. We got a vacuum here because when we got here, it needed a little bit of dusting off. And we have an air cleaner here to clean the air while we're working here. And we wear masks, we wear goggles because you never know what's in here. The fellow who owns the place says, well, gee, Bert came in here and he tested for mold and there was no mold. And I said, I know. Unfortunately, I have my own built-in mold tester. If I walk in a house and there's mold, my eyes will tear up and I'll start coughing. <laughs> what a drag. But when I came in here, nothing. Uh, no, no coughing, no sinus issues that's how you know there's no mold and besides i went outside to look at it to see if there's a roof that had been look, leaking which would indicate mold no mold so they've caught it in time toilet jacked up and boom they fixed it so it allows us to do our job without a headache or nightmare worrying about mold i'll show you what we got out here this is all necessary stuff guys here's your two most important things a dollar brush for your edges and a cheap radio. I mean, you can get these at second hand store for a dollar. The big ones, they take too much room in our truck. That truck right there has, it's an 11 foot bed, but it has everything we need. Important stuff. Uh, and here's what we're going to use, guys. We're going to use some Structolite. Now, in my day, there was 80 pound bags. We were doing hospitals and schools when I was working union uh, over 30 years ago. But now today, they have 50 pound bags. So, Structolite is, is a good base coat. Uh, a lot of ways to put that on too, and we'll get into that later. Here's another thing you need. Uh, personally, I've, I brought my color mix with me. We have other drills, but this one got a birdcage paddle, and the paddle here is smooth. So when we mix, we can get all the corners also. I always fill a five gallon bucket and leave it in there. The five gallon bucket holds the paddle and it keeps it clean. And if you're going to do interior finish, guys, with a hard steel chop finish, you need new buckets, brand new buckets. The paddle got to be clean. Everything got to be clean because if you get a couple heavy grains of sand, when you're doing the finish coat, they'll bleed through. We're, we're doing the base coat right now, so we're not worried about that. And here's lastly, too, I want to show you guys something. Folks always call me and say, gee, Kirk, I can't find... Um, the bonding agent you're referring to. Now, generally I'll use the plaster weld or the weldcrete for outside. Interior, exterior, you can use the exterior for inside, but you can't use the inside for outside. And why I use it? Because it's colored. See that pink color? And why we're on it, and you guys say, gee, I can't find either one of these because they don't sell these at Home Depot. Um, they do sell at Home Depot the Quickrete. Quickrete is white, and the, the Merlex is white, Personally, I stuck my finger in this one here. This is Biomega. Every 
Every plastering company makes a bonding agent, guys, so there's no shortage of it. I stuck my finger in here, and I put it on the top here so you can see it's, it's brown or yellowish. But what I like about these bonding agents are these are colored. If you have a whole crew and you're doing a whole house, you can see if somebody missed a spot. These milky white ones, good luck. You can't see them. They dry with a slight sheen, but if you miss a spot, it will come off. What did I use these bonding agents for? I hit the wood, the, the cedar wood lath there, because I want extra bonding agent besides the mushrooming. Anyway, guys, there's just a few tips on what we're going to do. Uh, since it's Jay's job, uh, I'm kicking back. I'm going to actually mix for a change. Jay, Jay's going to be spreading. I'm going to help him, of course, because I want to explain what we're doing here, because I haven't shown Structolite as a base coat. Kind of gluey stuff, but it's, it's a great base coat for a diamond or a white coat finish. So when we get to that stage, we'll show you that too. All right, guys, let me show you some more tips. I'm going to make this a real thorough plastering video. So this is the only video you'll ever have to watch in order to do a ceiling or a wall. Okay, we take our Structa Light. Now, Structa Light, good, good and bad about it is it's, it is lightweight. It looks and feels just like whipping cream. Now, you can put it over sheetrock. You can put it over masonry, brick, block, as long as it's inside. Of course, you can go over wood lath as well as button board or even wire. Uh, if you're not sure, put a bonding agent on it and it'll adhere to anything, but it's got to be interior. Here's another tip, guys. Now, I, I do this all often because I'm used to this product. I'm used to all these interior products. Use one, you could use them all. What I have is the largest hawk they sell, the largest trowel they sell. And what I like to do is fill it up just a little bit. I don't like to drop too much. Or of course, I don't care how good you are. You're going to drop some mud. But if you drop a lot, then you've got to step all over it, track it through the place, everything. So when you're applying, uh, fill up your trowel and a light hand, guys. Leave your, you can put your hawk underneath it in case some does drop. The idea is don't drop any mud if you don't have to. Of course, it takes practice not to drop mud. And you don't want to go with a heavy hand and push too much. Otherwise, you lose all your mud in these keys. So the idea, again, is try not to drop any mud, guys. Don't drop any mud because if you do, you're going to be stepping in it and make the job so much longer. Again, we take a plaster scoop. By the way, guys, all these tools you see we, we are using. We have an Amazon account that Jay did. You can... Click on the description and purchase any of them. So, okay, we're going to move right along too. I'll tell you another thing why I like the largest trowel they sell is because I can take it, the mud, right from the middle. I leave four inches here, four inches here. And when I apply it, it won't spill. Like say, I fill the whole trowel up and I hit it, it'll squirt right off the edges. Then we're stepping in it. And then we'll have to clean it up too. So, uh... Thought I'd point that out, guys, because if you're really clean and you know your tools, you're way ahead of the game. And by the way, watch your foot and you don't want to fall through the plank. But as you're doing this, try to keep the wall or ceiling as smooth as possible. Why? Because when you're done, that can be your whole base coat. If you're doing hospitals and schools like we used to, Add three eighths at a time. Three eighths for the base, the first coat, three eighths for the second coat. Total of uh, seven eighths to an inch. But residential such as this, they're only a half inch. So we can get away with a quarter to a uh, half inch on this. And then we are going to show you how to put, or I'm going to show you how to put the white coat on. Or again, the diamond, the diamond, the veneer finish. So I'm going to stop it right here and finish what I'm doing so that Jay can come up here and help too. And we'll see you when we start the, the old white coating or veneer finishing. All right, guys, a couple other tips. Remember that dollar brush? That dollar brush is one of the things necessary to get these edges. A big $50 brush or a felt, it'll just leave a lot of lines. Question, what's a stronger finish? sheetrock whether staggered or just put up as opposed to this solid substrate anybody know anybody care this is way 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 stronger 
that doesn't have the finish coat on it either because it's a solid substrate. Here's something about this material that if any of you folks have ever spread interior finishes such as Structolite, the thing about Structolite is you don't want to, um, like say here, you can look at this, this is like glass, this is uh, a white coat or a veneer coat, it's like glass. This particular finish, here's a tip guys, if I keep going over it like this and clean, here's, a, here's the tip right here, if I keep going over it now without wetting this trowel, it'll be like putting a dry trowel with mud on it trying to get it smooth. It can never happen. Have I made this uh, Structolite smooth with my trowel? Yes. But ha can I match this finish here? No. Because it doesn't matter how good you are, you're not going to get it smooth like glass because this has these, some aggregate in it. So this gypsum, you take it and you can, each stroke, you got to wet every stroke. I mean, if you want it as smooth as possible, every stroke got to be uh, cleaned to, get, to keep water on the trowel. But what we're doing is because we're doing a third coat, I want to leave it a little rough. If I don't leave it a little rough, my veneer have a hard time setting on it. So it's got to have some kind of suction. So what I'm getting at is if I seal it, which this is sealing it now, I'm hard steel troweling it, which means I seal this so my diamond wouldn't adhere to it well. I'd end up having to put a bonding agent on this. So I'm going to leave it alone. We're going to watch paint dry, so to speak. It's uh, about 75 degrees outside. We're up in the hills. I had to turn the heat on the floor right here in order for the heat to come up here and dry this out because I forgot my Jimco. You add Jimco to Struct Life and you can make it set in five minutes if you like. Right now, it's been an hour, hour and a half, and we've got nothing but time. We're cleaning the truck and doing other things. So a little tip for you guys before we do the veneer finish. All right, guys, uh, before I start finishing up the diamond or skim coat, as they call it in UK, the finish here, you can float it. You can texture it, too. You can put a texture, but it'll always have uh, the little grainy look. Um, why? You see here, the grainy look, that's not sand. Uh, most of you plasters watch what we do. You guys know what that is. That's volcanic rock. Uh, crushed rock and that's what gives it so much strength. In fact, this is one of the most soundproofing plasters there are. Moving on guys. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm putting on a, a veneer, a veneer plaster. What is a veneer plaster? It's lime. A lot of lime and I'm using um, USG, the same the same finish that I've uh, applied a minute, a minute ago, the Structa Structolite is made by USG. They have so many different companies that make so many materials. Why do I use Diamond or Imperial for the finish coats? Because they sell them at my material yard. Uh, they also sell, uh, I mean in the UK, they sell so many different products. Uh, Thistle, um, Red Top, they're, they're all the same guys. In fact, I can't tell the difference when applying, but this particular finish here will match this finish. This is like glass, so they like this crack right here. Okay, you take this finish and boom, you, you, got, you got that done. And, and that's like glass. So the other, the Structolite, is the good base coat. In fact, if your daughter plays the drums or your son, like my daughter Madeline, she was playing the drums. I said, baby, uh, it's mighty loud. She says, well, I need the egg cartons back here. And I said, well, how about I just put some Struck the, light, uh, struck the light on and she's like, what's that, Dad? I said, never mind. And instead of doing the egg crates, I went ahead and used the, the struck the plastering. And that gave it a lot of soundproof so the neighbors didn't whine about how loud her drum set was. Anyway, guys, you see where this is going. And now this particular finish here is one of the hardest finishes. Why? Because it is a veneer. And a veneer has lime in it. And lime is just... Say the, uh, you crush the lime up and you, you put it in. So we got soundproofing, we got base coat, we got fire retardant, we got structural strength, we got 
we got it all in here. And now what I'm doing is just putting on this finish coat. I'm going to call it a day here because it's, well, because we got a lot of stuff to do. We're doing a lot of other things besides this. By the way, folks, my dad and I are now members of Amazon Affiliates. So if you're looking to buy any of the plastering or construction tools you've seen in our videos and you want to support us in the process, you can check the links below our video or you can go to our website and get them there. If you have any other questions that, for tools we don't have linked, email us direct and we'll respond to you then. All right, guys, you're still watching this two weeks in a row. This is the final product. And it looks like a jigsaw puzzle. That's okay. It's light and dark. That's just the nature of a diamond finish. We use diamond because it has a lot of lime, a lot of fat. And we can play with it and bring it back to life. Anyway, guys, we thank you for watching. And as usual, live long and plaster. Once again, folks, we thank you for watching. And I really enjoy all your comments. If you guys like this video, please click the like button down below. And also, if you enjoy what we do, subscribe to our channel so we can keep making these videos for you. My name is Kirk. And Jay. We thank you for watching. And from the entire Giordano family, we'll, we'll see you on the next one.